Well, we'll just tell your mother we ate it. Welcome in to the Bro 4 Squad podcast, where we're just a bunch of bros drinking beer and talking movies. This is episode 140, and I'm your host, the mayor, Jeff Hornacek. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Before we get into the movie discussion tonight, let's go around and meet my fellow bros. First, we go into the lab to the mad scientist, Brian Banner. Now, Banner, you and I have watched collectively zero seasons of The Bachelor and Bachelorette combined before we met Matt Geiger, who we're about to introduce. By my count, since we've met him, we've watched a combined six. Is he toxic? Is is he toxic or yes. the show toxic? Well, we know the show is, but Matt's the reason we watch it. I mean, we can yeah. blame all of our problems. I mean, I look, Matt is just... He's like that drug dealer that's like, look, man, you're not going to get addicted to this, okay? And I imagine this is what it's like being an alcoholic. Like, at first, I'm like, wow, you know, this show is kind of fun. It's a little ridiculous, but it's fun. And you wake up the next morning, and you're just hungover as shit, so disappointed in yourself. And I'm like, I'm never watching that again, ever. (laughs) Then the next week comes around, and I'm like, all right, well, look, I'll watch till the first commercial. Like, I'll just do one. We're like that kid that is like kind of always in trouble and they say he hangs out with the wrong crowd, you know, like that's his only problem. Matt's and then a, the wrong crowd. Well, then a guidance counselor brings up like, well, he's been at like four different schools. So he's like finding the wrong crowd. Wherever he goes, that's us. Yeah. Speaking of Matt Geiger, next we go into the paint to our enforcer, the aforementioned Matt Geiger. Now, Matt, you have a young baby boy who will one you will one day need to prepare to be an enforcer in his own life. So once he starts playing sports, what's the one thing you'll tell him to make sure he properly intimidates his opponents? Strike first, strike hard, no mercy, aim low, lead with the helmet. These are all good, just basically pretty easy tips that anyone can just find on Google if they really want to raise a sports star. Also, son, if he runs a crossing route over the middle, he is begging for it. Fair game. (laughs) He doesn't respect you enough to think that you'll hit My favorite Raider of all time, Jack Tatum, literally paralyzed a guy in a preseason game, Jeff. (laughs) He went over the middle. Yeah, I mean, the middle of the field isn't open any day of the week. Last I checked. It's funny because Tatum wasn't like a guy trying to win a spot on the team in preseason. (laughs) And he's still like, yeah, and he's still like paralyzing people on the field. I can't remember that guy's name. Like Daryl Stingley, I think. His, uh, I think his... His nephew played at LSU on that title team. Did his nephew have any choice words for Jack Tatum? I don't know. <laughs> his nephew's like the kid at the beginning of Jerry Maguire. His dad's in the hospital, the hockey player. It was a man's game back then. Now we just hit each other with our purses, and whoever hurts the most loses at the end of four quarters. Yeah, it's a whoever game back in the seventies. Whoever tweets the most complaints yep. is awarded the victory. All right, well, at the Bro4 Squad podcast, we start every episode off with the most important thing in any bro's life, and that is Chess Day. And as you might have seen from the title of this episode, we are revisiting one of our favorite things on this show. And by favorite, I mean my favorite thing, because it's relatively new. Uh, But with Valentine's Day approaching, and before we all disappoint our wives, we thought it was time to revisit a game that we've played on the pod before, but this time with a romantic comedy twist. So if you go back to episode 129 of the podcast, we played a game called Name That Film, leading up to Halloween. Relatively simple. Two of the bros on the pod were given a list of 20 movies to choose from. I read a plot synopsis to a film on IMDb, and using that list that they have, they do their best to identify the movie. We played seven different rounds, and whichever bro had the most correct movies at the end of the seven rounds wins. And if it's a tie, it's just a fight to the death. Each bro also gets one lifeline to use at any point, wherein they can get a slight hint from me by either asking the two top billed actors in the movie or the year that it was released. So before we get started, uh, you guys, and by you guys, I mean the two bros, have your movie bank list of about 20 films. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions or um, any protests? Anyone have an injury they want to disclose before we get started? No. Yeah. No. Why is the proposal not on this list? Whoa. It was just a random assortment of 20 rom coms. Wow. Okay. I, mean, I guess with Betty White's birthday, that would have been a nice inclusion. Rest in peace. Is she dead? No, she just said her 99th 99. birthday. Okay, sorry. I'm hurrying her to the grave. My bad. You know how you know someone's about to die when they have a birthday and they say they're blank years young? 
Because they only say that when you're close. I love Betty White. Her and, uh, damn it, I can't remember the mother's name from Andrew. Everyone loves Raymond. She's dead um, from Christmas yeah. Vacation. But oh, they both are like the same type of people to me. I enjoy they everything they're in. I didn't know she died. She it did was, die. This, this is like four recently. or five years ago. Yeah. Banner, remember when uh, one of our really good friends in college found out Bernie Mac died like two years after the fact? Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> it was like, that always sucks when you find that out. You're like, dude, this ruined my night. Like, literally, it was all over the news. Like, what it were you did. Doing? Ru- he was like, you think they'll do another season of the Bernie Mac show? And we we're like, that's kind of fucked up. He's like, what? Yeah. Like he's think dead. Do Mister Three Thousand Two. He he literally he honestly a lot of people left no on idea. the bone. I'm just saying it, it earns a sequel. The title would be Mister Three Thousand Two, not like <laughs> another. Two. No sense. <laughs> he you just can't do Mister Four Thousand. How the hell is he going to get a thousand more hits? That just he's doesn't not. make sense either. He'd be half cyborg like Anakin. All right, we have derailed. Here we go. Name that film, romantic comedy movies edition. Uh, Matt, you will go first. Okay. Uh, in the first round, we'll, we'll alternate there. Here is your first plot synopsis. The plot synopsis is, Ryan's dream for catching the eye of the goddess of the high school hallway has a chance of becoming true when her cousin offers to make him a deal. All he has to do is help Dunleavy to win the heart of his best friend, the beautiful, enigmatic Maggie. <clears throat> I'll read it again. Ryan's dream for catching the eye of the goddess of the high school hallway has a chance of becoming true when her cousin offers to make him a deal, all he has to do is help Dunleavy win the heart of his best friend, the beautiful enigmatic, enigmatic Maggie. It's a classic high school movie where you got to make a bet to fall in love. Matt, do you have a guess on what that film is? I mean, she's all that is a bet, but that's not the plot synopsis of this. So I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't want to use my lifeline quite yet. Um, I'm. <laughs> In the first question, uh, I already need a lifeline. That'd be like the leadoff hitter sack bunting. You're like, yeah. Bunting. So I'm gonna go with going the distance. Okay, Banner, your choice. I have no fucking idea. You have no clue either. So I too want to save my lifeline. I don't even know if I have the opportunity to use it now. I'm gonna say rumor has it. You are both incorrect. I'm going to say, Jeff, though, this is just good coaching styles. You save your timeouts for the fourth quarter. This is going to be a Big Ten, run the ball a lot, seven to ten games. So you have your timeouts. It's it's cold and snowing. I can't throw the ball (laughs) in this. Brian's like, we have a backup. My whole line has COVID. I mean, this doesn't, I mean, we got to suffer through this. Brian's like, it's our backup quarterback. We got to be really conservative with the play calling. So the film, and the main reason I put this on the list is when we get to the cast. The film is Whatever It Takes from the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And Matt, the two best friends in this movie are Shane West and Dave Franco. Still, if I would have asked you, if I would have used the lifeline, I would have been so pissed that I, I don't know a movie with Shane West and James Franco. Yeah. But when I saw them on the cover, I was like, how the fuck have we not seen this? This must be like right after Freaks and Geeks. Yes. Mm. And probably will put him on the radar for a walk to remember. Let's watch it. I'm in. I'll do a blind commentary on it. Same. I don't need much convincing. All right, number two. So no one gets the point there. Banner, you'll be up first to guess here. Here's your plot synopsis. A couple search for each other years after the night they first met, fell in love, and separated convinced that one day they'd end up together one more time a couple search for each other years after the night they first met fell in love and separated convinced that one day they'd end up together it's a beautiful synopsis i must say i'm gonna save my lifeline here as well even though I have no idea, I'm going to say a lot like love. Okay. Matt? Uh, I believe that is When Harry Met Sally. Good guess, both of you. Unfortunately, you're both wrong. And Nate what? Thurman rolling over in his grave. That is the movie Serendipity. From when did Nate die? Well, that's what Charles Barkley always says. When Who's dead? Upset. No, I said Nate Thurman because he oh. loves this movie. <laughs> well, Thurman, yeah, that is one of his favorite movies. movies. So I really don't care what he Where does. Where Kate Beckinsale writes her phone number in a book 
and then sells it at a consignment shop. And so the rest of the movie, John Cusack, every time he sees that book, he just buys it from a store, hoping her number's in it, which is dumb because you could probably just look in the back. Is that the one where he has the uh, walk or the stereo above his head? No, that's Say Anything, I believe. Okay. Yeah, John Cusack has made it, literally has bought houses off of romantic comedies. All right, defensive battle, as we thought it would be, (laughs) considering they're romantic comedies. We go to number three. I'm looking at the rest of these movies, and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen all the rest of these. You just might not. Your wives right now, if they can hear, well, they don't listen to the show. Yeah, they won't. They they don't care. We should have really had that place. Name another podcast that make their hosts look this bad. Like, So anytime people think that we actually have scripts for our movie commentaries, we don't fucking plan at all for this. I literally didn't even know what we were doing. I had to ask Jeff what we were doing two minutes before podcast. <laughs> yeah, 40 minutes before the pod, I go, uh, do we I explain it to Vance. this? He had no idea what the game even was. He wasn't on that episode. Can you imagine like a professional athlete doing that, showing up? No, I'll figure it out. <laughs> imagine before the Super Bowl explaining b- to Bill Belichick what defense is and how to do it. <laughs> He's like, what does Michael Scott say? Explain it to me like I'm five. <laughs> Okay, in the next summer, I'll be six. (laughs) All right, number three. A high school jock makes a bet that he can turn an unattractive girl into the school's prom queen. Geiger, you're up first. And that's that's she's all that. Okay, Banner. Mm, Pretty sure he's right. He is right. She's all that. I'm trying to think what to put in the column when you get it correct. Um, Put a Y. It's Freddie Prince, Paul Walker, rest in peace. Yes, and Rachel Lee Cook, of course, who went on to somehow do nothing after that. Is she like the main chick? She is. Yeah, none of those women, because the uh, Taylor girl's really pretty too, and she didn't do anything either. What do you mean she's really pretty? She has glasses on. Oh, that's true. What a fuck. What a dog. (laughs) Jesus. All right. Number four, Banner, you're up first here for this one. A guy and girl try to keep their relationship strictly physical, but it's not long before they learn that they want something more. Who would have seen that coming? Uh, This is No Strings Attached. Damn it. Okay, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, that's just Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis? No, No this one, no, no, no Strings Attached is Ashton Kutcher and uh, who's the chick? Uh, uh Natalie, the Natalie from Portman. Star Wars that can't yeah. ask. Yeah. Natalie, Natalie Portman. Um, yeah. You're thinking but of Friends of Benefits. They're both the same fucking story. They're the exact they, same fucking movie. And they came out in the same year. What? I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. That would have been fucked up to put both of those on the list. We should start a debate and like, just ask people at the bar. So I got to ask before we get any further. Are you a No Strings Attached guy or Friends with, with Benefits? Friends with Benefits. Yeah. Friends with Benefits, of course. For like, sure. Oh, God. I, I couldn't even talk to someone who was a No Strings Attached guy. I'm going to have a little bit I of... Think I, like I hope you have like a great better, night. actually. I think I did, too. Although Ashton Kutcher gives a hilarious monologue scene to Natalie Portman at the end of the movie where he's like professing his love to her. And that's one of my favorite things in rom-com. So I'm a little partial to that. Really funny that, uh, or not funny, I guess just tidbit. Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher are married and yeah. we're talking about. Multiple. Oh yeah. Interesting. <laughs> also, Woody Harrelson in friends with benefits wanted way more of him as the sports writer guy. Yeah. Got hardly any of them. Natalie Portman is the Randy Moss of actresses. Like, she's really great, but then sometimes she just stands at the line with her hands on her hips when it's a running play. If the play's not designed to go to her, why should she hustle? Like, I don't know, maybe... All she's just, doing is wasting energy at that yeah, point. Yeah, maybe to get the defense to think... He's, you know, like, telling the defensive back for the... Hack. It's a running play, so, you know, we might as well just rest on this one. Although it is a run to the left, so you might actually need to get yeah, involved. You might, <laughs> yeah, you might actually want to pay attention i'm not gonna block you or anything but yeah i'm not gonna get in your way i might like bump my knee into yours or something all right so it's a 2-2 tie here moving on to round five and banner i believe you're up here a woman conceives twins through artificial insemination then meets the man of her dreams on the very same day uh that is the backup plan okay and matt what's your guess I think it's life as we know it. Good guess, as that is very similar, but it is the backup plan. Shit. <laughs> yeah. 
starring Jennifer Lopez and Alex O'Loughlin from 2010. Yeah. What's the one? What's the one with Jason Bateman and Jennifer Aniston? Uh, the one with Jeff Goldblum also. The Switch. Oh yeah. See, I totally thought that was the movie you were talking about. Pretty much the same concept, though. Yeah. I'm kind of noticing that all these movies are the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, there's really only so much ground you can tread here, Matt. <laughs> They're like an ACDC song. <clears throat> it's all kind of the same really <laughs> i say they're all not good they're all just kind of the same acdc just spit their beer out at home listening to this i love acdc what? i'm just saying that you know it's <laughs> yeah i got you okay moving on to number six banner has a three two lead remember both you guys still have your lifelines left i don't know if anyone remember you can't take them home with you right number six matt you're up Connor Mead, a successful photographer, encounters a night of booze-fueled mirages as he relives all of his life's previous that relationships. the ghost of girlfriends past. Okay. Banner. Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> no. Pretty sure you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it is Try the, the old third to first move on Banner. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Bach. Yes, that is, of course, of course, the ghost of girlfriends past. And we, Matt and I, I think both rewatched it recently, and it is Fantastic. fucking great. I love that movie. Actually, Jeff, it's now in my Christmas um, mix. That's Good. a Christmas movie to me. You need to watch that every year. Totally agree. All right. Um, I already have a tiebreaker in mind. So, uh, Matt, you're down four to three, but if you get this one right, we'll go to the tiebreaker. All right. Here we go. Number seven, and the final one in our Name That Movie Romantic Comedy Movies Edition. Name That Film, excuse me. All right, number seven. Unacquainted Emily and Oliver join the Mile High Club together on the way from LAX to New York City. End of story. Except they keep meeting constantly over the next seven years. I'll read it again. I'm going to use my lifeline because I have to. Right, Painter, I'm guessing you do too. This is a tough part if you both Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Yeah, go ahead and use my lifeline. Okay, so I'm guessing, do one of you want the year and the other the cast? I want the cast. No, both... I'm going to make it hard on him. Give me the cast. So you're both going to get the cast. Okay. Well, yeah, because, I mean, the year's not going to help me out. Most of these came out in, you know, 2000. Nine. True, Most true. Of... All right, the cast, top two build are Ashton Kutcher and Amanda Peet. Wow, Amanda Pete from Saving Silverman. Yeah. Banner, I believe you're up first. <clears throat> no, I was up first last time. Um, and I want to put the pressure on Matt. But I thought Matt guessed Ghosts of Girlfriends passed first. I did. It's oh, Banner's maybe. turn. So you're trying to cheat. It's disgusting. Okay. It's Christ. Uh, go ahead, Banner. It's your turn. I'm thinking. You want the plot again? Yes. Yeah, give me the plot again. All right. Unacquainted Emily and Oliver. By the way, Oliver, horrible name for a movie. If you're out there named Oliver, just fucking relax. Join the Mile High Club together on the way from LAX to New York City. End of story. Except that they keep meeting constantly over the next seven years. Valentine's Day? Okay. And Geiger? <laughs> okay. I could actually tie this because that's a terrible guess. Um... It might be that. It can't be that. <clears throat> I want to say going the distance because it's on a plane. Is that your answer? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, that was a very educated guess. Fuck. And Banner at least picked a movie with Ashton Kutcher. But fortunately, you're both wrong. It is a lot like love. Damn it. That was, I was going to maybe think of that, too. <clears throat> hmm. Valentine's Day has... Has an amazing cast. If Amanda Peet's the second build, they're someone the in the editing room does <laughs> well, something wrong. Well, like Ashton Kutcher that, is way he's on this this list way too much because he's also in What Happens in Vegas. Correct. Right? Yes. These are the only movies he can do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did Butterfly Effect. Okay, one movie where he could act. Cool. As as Hansel Blacko won a Super Bowl. Is he in the league? Trent Dilfer. Actually, he is in the league. What Flacco is, but he is. Who's he play for? Kind of. He's on the Jets. <laughs> he can't yeah, start the Jets. <laughs> they have a good young quarterback, Matt. 
that you're going to draft this year <laughs> that you're talking about? <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and try and defend the Jets, even in a joke. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations, Brian Banner. By a final score of four to three, you win the Name That Film Romantic Comedies Movies Edition. What do you have to say for your performance today? I mean, are any of us surprised that I won? Because I am. You are. <laughs> I think I've seen a total of five movies on this list. That's what makes it fun. Yeah, it was a blast. I want to do it again. I want um, Banner to host the next one and him just do like shark and underwater movies and me and Jeff have to guess. <laughs> Ooh, and Banner has seen all these like four times a year and he's just like, that's that's the Meg 4. How do you not know that? And Banner's like, the movie bank is 312 movies. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? Naturally. Well, I had to slim it down. Yeah. It's Jaws 6. Why would you think that's Jaws 3? I'm like, what's the difference? What a, I don't what's even know. What's the understand? difference? <laughs> Listen to this guy. All right, that does it for our chess day. <clears throat> Moving on to our protein shake, where we go around and talk about what is in our cup, also known as what have we watched lately. All right, Matt, we'll start with you as is tradition. What have you seen recently? Okay, I before I came on pod... Um, I watched Forrest Gump and I I have a problem with Tom Hanks, you know that, but this is like Correct. when he first started to kind of filter from kind of pop movies to more Oscar movies. Have you guys seen the end of Forrest Gump in a while? Cause every time I turn it on is the Vietnam part, which is actually, I think one of the best maybe 40 <clears throat> minutes movie history when they're over in Vietnam. Cause I laugh yeah. all the time. Have you seen the ending in a while? <laughs> Uh, let me think how it ends. I mean, I know like the last scene where he takes young Forrest and drops him off at school. Haley Joe Osmond. Yeah. And Jenny like drops him off. Robin Wright, obviously. What happens before that? So Sally Field is fantastic in this, but when she dies, watch it, watch it again, especially being in our age. I haven't watched it in a while, but when Sally Field dies, like you almost start to cry. And then he finds out that Jenny has a kid and then Jenny dies of a virus they didn't know about, which is became AIDS. I forgot how historically the reason this movie's so good is because like how historically not accurate, but it's, yeah. Yeah, they just go over like Bubba Gum Shrimp. He uh he's he does he's in the Watergate Hotel. He finds right. Elvis. He does so much shit. But this maybe I would say is as Americana as like Don McLean bye bye Miss American Pie that this if someone would say an American movie, I think that maybe this one would be the first one that people would talk about. Probably. Yeah. And I, I don't even like Tom Hanks, but it's a great film. Um, one thing I did not think as a kid, maybe, and I'm not saying the humor is like highbrow, but as a kid, when you watch it, you miss a lot of the jokes. Oh, a lot of it's like really fun. Like whenever he uh, sold Bubba Gump Shrimp and he, bought some stock in Apple. He's like, yeah, they told me I don't have to worry about money anymore. I'm like, well, that's good. One less thing. <laughs> but as a kid, you laugh at like the wave he gives the Lieutenant Dang from the dock. Yeah. You don't, you don't laugh at like him teaching Elvis how to dance, you know? No. Like you don't pick up on that stuff. But I agree. That was when Tom Hanks started to make the turn. He started to feel the love from the Academy. And he was, it was he was like a drug addict then. He just got addicted to it. He can and stop have... anytime he wants, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> Right. That's why we have Greyhound and uh, News of the World in the same year. Uh, next thing I watch on Netflix right now, Airplane, um, which my wife has never seen and my wife is loving. And if you know me, you know, I love I don't know how you call this, Jeff, like slapstick, dumb well, it's, comedy. It's just like a straight up satire. Basically, yeah, like right? basketball. Like I mean, I, I'm not saying like I like scary movie four. But I do like, you know, the stupid ass comedy, Blazing Saddles, uh, Spaceballs, that type of stuff. Airplane is probably the best one. And if you haven't watched this in a while, it's so fucking great. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in it. This is something I think could be remade. Like LeBron James could play Kareem. You could, cool. you could do or a whole Shaq, different maybe. airplane thing. Yeah, that was back when like the... Uh, I mean, Scary Movie really, really jumped the shark. Where they took the slapstick concept. Because Airplane has a story. And then satire yeah, within it airplanes not really making fun of other movies not like space balls is or scary movie right and the spoof film uh i like the original scary movie and i really like not another teen movie 
mm-hmm. but at a certain point they're just so uncreative because every single gag they have is just predicated on something yeah. that's come for it and i will be the first to say like i don't like every one of them so they have to be like clever like Spaceballs is one of the first ones of his time and stuff it's still really good. i'm a big uh leslie nielsen guy myself oh yeah Pretty naked guns everything. i love yeah. he's and what was the show police squad have you ever seen that show yeah he's great in that too <laughs> i'm sorry miss we would have been here sooner but your husband wasn't dead then he he was he's a very underrated actor. Is he still alive? No, we lost him at like four or five years ago. Like, why he's, do we even do this pod anymore? Like we should just quit and protest of people dying. But he's in uh, All I Want for Christmas, the movie that I always bring up mm-hmm. every year. He plays the Santa Claus at the mall, which is a great great role for him. Uh, I got two more. Uh, the next one, I want to see your guys's uh, opinion on this because I watched Twister, and I hate movies. That have to do with like um, natural disaster. disasters. Yeah. yeah. And basically there's no story after about 10 minutes. It's basically just like, I don't know, like adrenaline CGI, just bullshit. Like I don't mind CGI in a while, but I'm just like, basically I go to a theater. I'm just watching someone run from wind. And I know twisters are dangerous and stuff. I mean, a bunch of us are from the Midwest, but I, I, I can't get into those type of movies where it's end of like the ocean is coming to New York city and going to flood everything. I just don't like the running away from a natural disaster movie. I don't know how you guys feel about that. That's why you like hurricane heist so much. Cause they don't run from the hurricane. They, they run go out. to the hurricane and kick its ass. Hurricane. You got a fucking problem. Red 52. Got an AR 15 right in the back of a bald eagle. <laughs> fucking go right into the motherfucker and shoot it. I feel sorry for the hurricane that tries to challenge us. Uh, I don't think this is a controversial take, Banner. Maybe you'll feel differently just based on where we grew up. But I was never really that into the movie Twister. I never even thought it was cool, really, as a kid. No, I honestly, the movie scared the shit out of me. I mean, you guys know I'm not a big fan of uh, storms, uh, especially twisters or tornadoes. Um, So I never liked this growing up. And I especially don't like it now that my house was hit by one uh, several (laughs) years back. So... Uh. Uh, yeah, no, I'm good. I'll pass. Hard pass. I do love Bill Paxton, though. I can definitely take or leave Helen Hunt, but rest in peace, Bill Paxton. God, how many dead people are we going to bring up this What the episode? fuck happened to Helen Hunt, too? Like, she just doesn't do movies. What was the sitcom she was on with Mad Paul Mad About Rice? You? Mad yeah. About You. Yeah. But she that was came like back. St- it did? What? Jesus Christ. Mad About You? Pretty sure. No, I might have. This, a lot of these shows now have like revival seasons. You yeah, know, like, it came back on like Peacock. I, I remember seeing it a couple of months ago. They were Such a like peak. pitching up because they're kids in college and they got empty nest syndrome and they're going to make a show about it or something. That's, fun. I mean, that's great. Uh, interesting. I mean, why not? They have Roseanne right now without Roseanne in it. Yeah. Paul Rock. <laughs> you mean the Ray Connors? <laughs> like, who watches that show? Like, that's something Banner would watch. Banner's watching the Goldberg, so. Dude, don't hate on the Goldbergs. Okay? I'm not. It's I'm not. really fucking funny. Such a fucking NBC shit show. Like I <laughs> it, didn't see it's it, but... ABC. Thank Whatever. you very much. Like who watches those straight. network television shows anymore? Anyway, last thing I'm gonna say, and I, probably none of you have seen this movie in a very long time, but uh, I've been on a Wahlberg kick recently, so I had to watch Fear. Which is a fucking fantastic wow with Reese Witherspoon, with him and Reese Witherspoon. Damn, I believe I mean, it's his first movie because Wahlberg has always fascinated me. Um, I just like how he carries himself. I'm trying to adapt his way of life because he basically works out at 3 a.m. Because he's like, dude, that's the only time I have time. Because his his schedule is he works out at 3 a.m. He just takes a shower, hangs out with his kid, and then golfs. I'm like, me and Thurman basically we were like, okay, like we yeah. could do that as long as we go to bed at 7:30. But his transformation from Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch to being, okay, you can be an actor, to being, okay, you can fucking win an Oscar and do, like, the fighter and stuff like that. Just, it's weird to me how some people are categorized as Vanilla Ice that you can't do anything, and then some people at Marky Mark get a pass. But he is great in this. He has had an insanely interesting career, and I just got an idea. We should do one episode at brothology but where instead of us going through like movies of our own lives we take like a person 
and we just break down their career like beat by Ooh, beat and analyze that'd be really cool marky mark is all over the map i mean he was like a shirtless laughing stock in the mid 90s and then he does the movie fear and like matt said you're like okay this heartthrob is in it with some blonde chick and now he's commanding 15 million dollars a picture and, and he's a rapper we didn't even know he could act right and he could and do he anything here he does rock star and then he kind of goes away in a while and then once four brothers comes back that's when people are like all right dude let's give this guy a shot and then donnie Wahlberg's like well if he can do it i can do it no you can't donnie i'm sorry I like Donnie, sit down. Men are talking. And then also, I mean, he created Entourage, and that's about his life. Like, he is Vin. And can I just say, I don't think this gets talked about enough. Because this, like, I love Jon Favreau, but back then, if Jon Favreau created Entourage, he would be in 50 episodes of it. Marky yeah. Mark only appears in, like, two episodes of yeah. Entourage. Which One of them, resist- I think, is the season, is a is the series finale. Who is? I think I think one of the episodes he is is the series finale, and that's it. Yeah, I remember there's one where he's Matt. You might know this better than me, but he Wahlberg is like golfing at that pro. No, it's my favorite episode. I will tell you exactly what it is. So Turtle's a big New York fan, and they get paired with Tom Brady, and he's just like, I'm gonna tell him he's a douchebag, but then you realize Brady's like really cool fucking guy, and Wahlberg just goes over to him on the range and makes one of their golf swings and say that they're pieces of shit and walks away. That's the one thing I always loved about Wahlberg is. I don't know if he's like this in real life. He seems like he is, but he can just play the biggest asshole if he wants to. And he's great at it. Well, it would be like in the movie Ready to Rumble when they want the king to crown them. If you and I met Mark Wahlberg, we'd be like, tell me I'm a piece of shit. And <laughs> You're I, a piece of shit. And say how you mother for me. I'm like, God, he said it. Like, I don't want him to compliment my shoes. Can I work out with you at 2.30? Like, I guess. I don't know. I'm typically sleeping by then. I wake up by 2.45. Yeah, no, whatever. It's fucking whatever you want to do. You got anything else, Matt? Fear, check it out. No, I'm good. All right, Brian, how about you? What's in your cup? So I've got uh, got three things tonight, one of which uh, I share with you, our weekly update on a particular network show, Matthew. Want to save that for the end while I go? Yeah, we'll save that that for the end. Um, So I'm going to start with the live-action Aladdin. Now, Matt, I know... We gave this a the Bro Four Squad stamp of approval. We gave it a pass. <laughs> it passed. On rewatch, I kind of want to take that back. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Will Smith is fine in it. I think he did a good job of being the genie, paying homage, but not taking away from what Robin Williams was able to do with that same character. Uh, Naomi Scott, Jasmine. I don't know if she like thinks she's too good to act or she's just not a good <laughs> actress. I'm not exactly sure how I'm not sure what's going on there, but there's something going on there. Uh, they added a song speechless that she sings just as the song itself really like it, but it has no place being in this movie. It is really poppy and really modern i guess is the right word and it does not fit with the other songs and the rest of the theme of the movie um the guy that plays aladdin he did fine i think it kind of sucks for him that he's not I'm trying to remember work right we liked him it was jafar that we didn't jafar like? is don't even get me started on jafar jafar <laughs> is fucking terrible I've jafar might as well theaters. have been in a different movie it's all coming back to me now naomi yeah. scott i'm like she's hot um She's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, the Aladdin guy honestly surprised me if I remember right. Like he did way better than I thought. His his dancing abilities and his the way he was able to do a lot of the physical stunts was very was very, very impressive to me. I thought he did a great job. His singing. Was it the best? No, not even close. Was it? I don't the know worst? If you guys... No, not even close. He did great. He did fine. I don't know if you guys heard, but he apparently was like <clears throat> pissed. Because after the movie came out, like he couldn't even get auditions. He said, "Yeah, he's he's having trouble getting work right now." I mean, he wasn't that bad. No, yeah, he and wasn't. He, was, he wasn't my problem with this movie. the The problem with Disney movies, and we've said this before, is that if your movie is about a lion cub singing on an elephant, 
that works as a cartoon. It doesn't work if the lion looks real. If your movie is about like a boo and a, a, a genie, then you can't like CGI some stuff. It's just too, it's too cartoony. That'd be like making a real life Looney Tunes movie. How stupid would that be having a real rabbit? Like what? I mean, that, it doesn't make fucking sense. <laughs> like some things just need to be cartoons. Also, one thing I, to that point, Matt, one thing I realized from the when the marketing for that movie started to come out, we are such a sick fucking people and we pick the weirdest shit to get so mad about. I remember the first image of Will Smith as the genie came out. We were so mad. We I were took on, a personal on, day off work just so I could fucking destroy it, it on I the internet. I was like, if this motherfucker isn't blue, I swear to God, I'm burning down a post office. And it's like, what? Why do you? It's just a scene. Like, actually, and it made sense whenever he was, he was telling the story at the end of it because he was already freed, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. But at the time, like, I, why, why do I need my genie blue? Like, what? <laughs> Why am I going to commit violence against Disney? Jeff, I don't know if you want to bring that up on pod here. It's that'll take three hours. Yeah, that's true. I don't. I'm a sick fuck. I need some help. Uh, that, didn't that Lion King come out in the same year? Yes. And sounds right. They're both just colossal disappointments. Like, how do you miss on both of those? Yeah, but I think when the trailer for Aladdin came out, people got way less excited. <laughs> well, yeah, in Lion King, basically, they're just like, let's just play this safe. Let's basically just have different actors make it CGI, but the script is going to be the exact fucking same. Just have them re... And James Earl Jones, honestly, is like, so you just want me to reread this stuff? Yeah, update it, James. I... But he sounded like less, like, he didn't even want to be there, let's be honest. On this side. And somehow it's 45 minutes longer than the cartoon. <laughs> yeah, I, that's we should do another episode where we figure out, we just called it episode, how the fuck is the live action Lion King 45 minutes longer than the anime? Like, what do they add to it? I'll have to say the first part, though, when they did the Circle of Life was pretty fucking cool. I'm like, yeah. okay, this is, uh, you there got was, There were definitely some cool parts in it. And same with Aladdin. I, I'm not saying I didn't think there were some good parts just overall i think we overreacted a little bit to how good it was i think as far as the live action goes in my opinion they have missed on everything other than cinderella Cinderella. and beauty and the beast and those are because cinderella doesn't i mean that's more live action ish than a bunch of lions singing on elephants exactly and And honestly cinderella is like so far before our generation really that yeah Yes. Yeah, and like we said, Jeff, if some of these, if they do Lion King 2 or Aladdin 2, they'd probably be good because mm-hmm. all the Aladdins and Lion Kings after that fucking suck. So if you come up with a different story, you we're not going to compare it to the original. You might actually have a good movie. That's a good point. And actually, I think they said for the Aladdin sequel, they're not doing Return of Jafar, which number one is smart because there's no group of people out there on the Internet. I don't know. The Internet's a crazy fucking place. But I doubt there's people like, I need Return of Jafar live action. Or we we walk. There's that Forty group thieves there. would be cool. <laughs> Guarantee you. What do you say, Banner? Forty thieves would be cool. That live would action. Be cool. Uh, but I think now, like when Little Mermaid comes out or something, I think I'll enjoy it more because now that we have this large of a sample size of the Disney live actions, I've just come to expect less. It's like <laughs> when you know your kid is not good at sports and he finally makes a basket, you're just very appreciative. <laughs> If he just walks this at bat and doesn't strike out on three yeah. terrible pitches, I'll just I'll be fine. Just look like you're at least wanting to be in the batter's box, son. Not trying to get hit. <clears throat> what else, Brian? Go, go ahead, right. Vader, sorry. Uh, next thing, I watched the first two episodes of this four-part miniseries on the Night Stalker on Netflix. You guys Ooh, I'm about to start that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not a fan of true crime. I don't I don't like it. It freaks me out because there's fucking sick people out there literally like peeping into my house, essentially. Um, my wife, on the other hand, absolutely loves true crime. So naturally, I got to watch this. Guys, this is terrifying. This is a obviously a true crime story about a guy in the 80s that basically walked around to L.A., and would go on these mini killing sprees. He'd in a way span of a week, he would kill five people, and then he wouldn't kill for a month or two, and then he'd kill another two or three people. Is this based on the HBO documentary series "I'll Be Gone in the Dark"? Is it the same guy? 
Maybe. I don't know. I haven't okay. seen it. You think one. the press was on him like, hey, you haven't killed in two weeks. Are you in a slump or what's going on? It's like, nope. listen, I got to nope. let, you know, you can't figure this stuff out. You know, I got, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing BP every morning. It'll come. Uh, I mean, it's terrifying. It's kind of cool to watch. They interview the uh, detectives and everything. I mean, it's a documentary, guys. Um, if you like true crime, sure, I suggest it. I don't like it, so probably won't continue on. Uh, my Did mom you like actually it before mentioned you had a kid. You. Maybe no, I didn't really like. Okay, I, I, really I like, like that stuff, but now that I have a kid, I I don't want to be any more paranoid that I already fucking yeah. am. Yeah. Um, my mom actually suggested me suggested to me to watch this and she lived in la during this time oh shit. Um, yeah so obviously you know i have family that lives there and you know my my mom lived through this so it was kind of cool to see that process and kind of relate to um such a close family member while watching this and thinking like shit like what would be what was going through her mind when this happened you know so, Banner, the reason I ask, I'm actually reading the book right now, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which is written by Patton Oswalt's late wife, investigating yes. the Golden State Killer. Is that what they call this guy? No, this is a different guy. Okay. Because that the Golden guy, State Killer was... He was like, in the 70s, I believe. Yeah. So, the, the one of the detectives that was on the Night Stalker guy solved the Golden State Killer guy. Or it might have been... Okay, don't, don't know, spoil too much for me. Yeah. With the Golden State Killer. But, okay, that, that's good to know, because I was waiting... Well, spoiler, to... it gets solved. They find him. Ah, ah damn it. Well, um, why don't we have serial killers anymore? We have DNA. Yeah. Is that why? There's Is that the only reason? Okay. <laughs> There's semen because, on everything. I mean, it seemed like when we were kids, you know, we'd learn about Bundy and all these people that would get away with I mean, years of murders. Yeah. And then they'd find them like actually all these other ones connect too, and now it just doesn't seem like we have anybody which with social media i mean it's not like anything is hiding or anything Look, but if the internet can solve who killed the cats <laughs> nobody has any shot <laughs> i forgot about don't fuck with cats man that was that was a really disturbing documentary yeah that one fucked me up for a little bit okay well i'm good to know they're separate because i'm waiting to finish the book I'll be gone in the dark before I watch the HBO miniseries. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I don't think they're the same, but they might be. I don't know. I honestly can't tell you. Okay. Well, you just promised and swore to God that they were different. So, uh, well, maybe your God. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, last thing is the thing that we share. Oh, okay. Perfect. Uh, I have just a couple things aside from that. First thing that I watched was you've got mail this is on hbo max and oh, yeah it sounds the, the, super familiar <laughs> the fiance had never seen it and i actually kind of watched this preparing for uh name that film romantic comedy movies edition i really like this movie and i gave it a four out of five stars on letterboxd it's oh like, it's wow. great man it's great <clears throat> and it makes you realize as quickly as you ascend to the top of the Hollywood totem pole, you can fall. Because I was watching Meg Ryan in this movie, and my fiance, who's only five years younger than me, asked, who's that? Who was, like, the hottest chick in the 90s. Like, I everyone know. wanted Meg Ryan. She was the girl Couldn't next be... door. I told her, I said, her haircut was, like, the hair before the Rachel. That was, yeah, like, Sarah McLaughlin had that haired style. Mm -hmm. But she, yeah, that was the hairstyle. I don't know all what of you our, call all it. All of our but, moms yeah. probably tried to get it, right? Yep. I think my mom had it for a little while. And it just makes me realize <laughs> the success in Hollywood at the top of the totem pole, it's fleeting. It's like sand slipping through our fingers. She's fingertips. still alive. She, I mean, for all intents and purposes, yeah. Isn't she really I mean, detoxed I up? Busy. Oh, yeah. She, she dated Russell Crowe for a little while, and apparently things got, like, really messy between With them. With Crowe? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound like Crowe to me. So ah, people said he was drinking. I said, not what? the first one I know. <laughs> oh, because of God and everything. It was the weekend. <laughs> Put your Bible oh. down for a second. Like, oh, God. so I'd like to crack a bottle of whiskey on a Friday night after I've worked all fucking week. <laughs> she beats the shit out of her. It's like, <laughs> what's for dinner? She's like, we have like servants for that. We already ate. Oh, sorry, I forgot. 
But You've Got Mail is really good. And Matt, when I give you my HBO login, I it is a blast to watch. I'll say that on pod. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> HBO's like, the fuck did you say? Someone's always listening. <laughs> HBO's like, we give you five fucking logins. You need more? This is where uh, Tom Hanks has poison ivy up his ass, right? Correct? I don't remember him having poison ivy. Oh, it was there. No, it yeah, was there. way Trust up in there. Me. All up in his ass. So you've got mail. It's just, I think once a week I'm going to try and watch one of these. Because Matt did the same thing with like Twister. It's good to do these like nostalgia watches. Just see like does shit hold up. And because you kind of glorify them sometimes. Or you just remember them being total pieces of shit. And I've loved You've Got Mail. Well, and there's some funny. movies as, as 90s kids, which we are. But we're like early 90s kids. So like Twister was a movie that you'd rent if you had a date. But I was five. So I didn't have a date. So right. if some of these movies, as I got older, I just never, ever saw in in entirety. So I'm like, oh, I should probably watch this. I remember it being big at Blockbuster, but I wanted to get TMNT 2 for like the 80th fucking time. I'm not yeah. going to rent Twister. And I wanted to eat a bunch of sugared candy and then That's do karate. That's just a sound investment, Matt. All right. Play it safe. Invest in a CD. There's nothing to do a penny stock. You know what I'm saying? You know what the returns you're going to get. I watched a movie that just got released on Video On Demand, and Brian will just say I rented it from my local library. Okay. Uh, it's called Promising Young Woman, starring Carrie Mulligan, who you guys probably remember from, like, The Great Gatsby and a few other things, and Bo Burnham, who, of course, is a stand-up comic, kind of polarizing there, but he also directed that movie Eighth Grade. Matt, I think you watched Eighth Grade, yeah. right? It was, I, it was actually really good. <laughs> Yeah, it was, and Bo Burnham, I think, is hilarious, and he's really funny in this, but this is a drama thriller, and I'll just say this, one of the most unexpected endings I've seen to a film, probably in like the past two or three years, um, and after I watched it, we have our first nominee for the 2021 Broscars, because I threw it up there, which might not stay on the list, but if you want a movie that, like, the last 15 minutes you're going to be standing up off your couch like, holy, holy shit, that fucking happened. It's uh, Promising What's young it called again? Promising Young Woman. Okay. The premise is, and I don't want to give too much away, Carrie Mulligan plays a very spiteful and obsessed girl who has this thing that she does where she goes out to bars on the weekends pretends to be blackout drunk to see if a guy will try to pick her up and take her home. And then she basically like assaults the guy. And this plot starts to unravel. I can't even say much more than that. It has a fucking wild ending though. You got me hooked though. Yeah. Promising young woman. Very, very good. Uh, this one I'll only mention briefly because I think Matt and I will probably talk about it at length next week, but I watched Tiger the two-part HBO documentary on Tiger Woods. People at home mm-hmm. are like, Joe Exotic? Like, No, that's 2020. We've left that. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> wasn't pardoned. Get over it. Right. And all that, I'll say, all that I'll say about Tiger is that I just think HBO continues the trend of making a documentary that is interesting because they give you both perspectives evenly. This is not at all a hit piece on Tiger Woods. It's not at all some, like, ESPN 30 for 30 watered down doc where they just suck his dick for three hours. But I think the reason they do two parts is you get two different sides of the story and it gives me everything I want. And I think this is why Matt will like it. It gives you all the juice and the dirt that you want. And then it's also very, very golf heavy and focuses on how he's probably the greatest athlete of all time relative to his field. But I'm sure Matt and I, uh, if he gets a chance to watch it this week, we'll talk more in depth about it. But I highly recommend it. Last thing before Brian and I uh, join forces here. I watched The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. I'm sure you guys have heard of this, right? With Anya Taylor-Joy? Yeah, I've heard of it. I, that's the chess one, right? <clears throat> yeah. It's a seven-part chess series. I've kind of soured on Anya Taylor-Joy because everything I see with her in it, I like her less. I loved her in Split. Split. Yeah. She was okay yeah. in Glass. Uh, I saw New Mutants. I'll just leave it at that. And then this, and then this she's came there. Out. She's present. She yeah. was on set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she showed up. Perfect attendance. And, yeah, perfect attendance. And then this comes out, and she really has to shoulder the load. To me, this would be like Matt. You'll love this analogy. 
if you were building a team in the 90s and I said, oh, okay, uh, who's your best player? And you said, Horace Grant. I'd be like, well, you're, you're going to win 20 games. Yeah. <laughs> he's a That's fine player. On a good year. Yeah, he's but fine. He, but he can't be the first name you mention. <laughs> Anya Taylor-Joy is like a great second or third build. She was awesome in The Witch. But she's the person who needs 30 carries uh, of the football, and she's just not able to, to do it. She has just no range, really. Like She has like this really small spectrum of emotion she can display. And also, I don't... She's supposed to be like a... 25 26 year old she still looks 14 to me like she didn't split does she really because i wanted to say she looks hot but i just saying. i mean she well she's very much of age she's like 23 years old <laughs> you should say that it's allowed don't worry yeah. <laughs> uh but there's one part in the movie and i was of course being sarcastic but like it, it there's like a flashback to her being younger at the orphanage and an eight-year-old is playing her because she's like eight and i go <laughs> Just fucking get on to Taylor Joy to play this role. And my fiance oh, goes, she, hey, she can play she's it all. 23. <laughs> but I actually thought The Queen's Gambit was pretty good. Um, it is a bit long, like seven hour long episodes, and a few of them drag, but it's a period piece, which is always fun, set in the late 50s and late 60s. It's, um, what what's the word? Historical fiction, I guess. Like, she's not yeah. a real person that existed, yeah. but it's cool because all the historical events, like us and our feud with it's basically like a russia hit piece like it just my, my it. wife finished it so i'd be like in and out on it and i'd watch mm-hmm. some of it it is interesting because it was taking place in like you know the time period that i fucking love i love yeah. kind of like mad men type of stuff like that it's just something that i'm you know i don't know if it's good or bad but i i can look at it for 20 minutes and be like this wasn't made for me so i'm just gonna go in the other room which is a completely acceptable thing to say <laughs> Also, I think I might have a problem because her character is like a burgeoning or maybe like in and out alcoholic throughout the series. And every time she starts like binge drinking and and guzzling a liter of vodka, I always think to myself, kind of want to drink right now. And I know it's it's not romanticizing alcoholism. It's like this can fuck up your life if you drink two liters of vodka before work, which I don't do yet. Only one liter. Right. But when I watch it, I'm just like, I could use a beer. I work hard. You deserve it. <laughs> you deserve a beer. <laughs> so Queen's Gambit. Uh, didn't uh, didn't get a Brosker nom for us this year. We might have to add a TV category for next year. I can't year, believe but... you watched all seven episodes of that. That's insane. It took us about three weeks to do. Okay. Which in the day of binging, day and age of binging, you know, is... That's like two years. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So seven nights over the... It's like every third day we'd watch some of it. It was fine. Um, all right, Painter. All right. Tell the people uh, what we watched together, if you didn't already mention it. Yeah, if you haven't figured this out, uh, The Bachelor. Matt, are you up to date on this? Are you in on this? I haven't watched you... it at all. God. I don't stay up past eight right now. <sighs> yeah. Well, I unfortunately but stayed I up to on midnight to I could, finish I could this. get caught up pretty quick. Banner, I have a few questions, if you don't mind, before we get started. Please. So Sarah, of course, who we can get into what happens with her later on in the episode, but I'll just start off with what she did right off the top. Uh, Matt, this girl named Sarah already had a rose. She she was the first one to get a one-on-one date. Correct, yeah. So she already had a rose going into the rose ceremony. Things are getting tense at the rose ceremony. We're down to like four roses left and about seven girls. And Sarah faints. Now, I don't even, even though, think she actually fainted. And for but, the people listening, when you already have a rose going in the rose ceremony, it's basically like you already clinched home field in week 16. <laughs> you just have to sit it. there with your mask on and don't get COVID. Pretty exactly. much is all you have to fucking do. Right. Don't get injured walking to and from the locker yeah. room. <laughs> so Sarah faints. And then, of course, all the other chicks are like, oh, my God, if I can get Sarah, can't get enough attention. And I'm sitting here yelling at my TV because this is what Matt's done to me. I'm like, she gain, She gains nothing from fainting. She has the rose. She doesn't need to do anything. So, Brian, I got to ask you, because this is the real debate. Was that gameplay, her fainting, or do you think she just, like, locked her legs and maybe got a little lightheaded? I think... She's fucking insane. She's batshit <laughs> fucking crazy. Okay. This way. So, I... That's like, on The Bachelor? What? I think... The thought went through her mind, how can I steal the moment? 
<laughs> and then she goes, well, wait a minute. I shouldn't do that. But I will lock my knees. Just we'll let fate decide. I love when they call for the medic and he walks in and he, you know he wants to be like, there's nothing fucking wrong with this chick. Like, why do I need to? <laughs> why is there a medic on the, like, that easy on the I set know. of The Bachelor? That's another he's question like, I have. He's like, look, I was on the sixth episode of The Queen's Gamut, God damn it. Yeah, why do you need a medic? What do you think is going to happen? Like, what is, yeah. I, I understand <laughs> when they're doing like a football game or something, but not during a rose ceremony. That's because the football game is usually off campus somewhere. That makes no sense. That would be like if I had like a dinner party and you guys came over and there was just like a fucking medic standing yeah. at the corner. Like, hey, hey you never know. Honestly, you know? at your dinner party, there's probably more need of a medic than there is at a rose <laughs> ceremony. You know, I'm making just famous chili and it is a little spicy. The so better bit, safe than sorry. Caliente, as I like to say. I and mean, Matt's like, well, I'm more nervous now that there's a fucking medical professional right away from the <laughs> asparagus than I was before. He's eating a bowl of chili. He's like, Jeff, this is pretty spicy. <laughs> Do you believe the seeds in the jalapenos? <laughs> Banner, one other thing I want to say, and then anything you need to get in here. But uh, I texted all you guys when this happened. So one of the dates in this episode, Matt, uh, they have the girls on the group date write like an erotic scene from a book about them oh, sure. and the bachelor, Matt. Uh -huh. And they reveal very subtly, like I was almost offended at how nonchalant yeah. they brought this up, that Chris Harrison has written a series of erotic fiction novels. I, I mean, need to buy all of these and what? read them and do... I need to do reviews on them. I was going to say, how do we start the Rove War Squad book club? Because I'm the biggest Banner, Chris Harrison head ever. This is infatuated with that guy. Right. Same here. And if anyone knows sex and how to put it on pen to paper, it's Chris Harrison. Well, here's the thing, guys. I looked up what it would cost to buy the book. It's like 17 bucks on Amazon. It's fucking cheap as hell. On paperback? Uh, yeah. That's insane. Yeah. We'll buy one book and share it. Okay. It's so fucking expensive. When, whenever but he that gets tells me, me it's a good fucking which, book. Whenever he gets me too, which is long overdue, me and Thurman are going to be the first ones in line to fucking put in for his job and get interviewed. Because yeah. all we're going to do is just play golf and deal with stupid chicks all day and then just act like we care. But, but you can also kind of talk shit to him too. I know. It's awesome. The scene last episode where that guy just shows up at his fucking house at 2 a.m. and he, he's too chill. He like invites him in for a glass of wine. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I'm like, tell this guy to fuck off. What you... <laughs> <laughs> if that guy knocked on Matt's door, Matt would be like, you have three seconds to get off my porch. Chris Harrison is a gentleman, sir. And I think he lives in the Dallas metro area. I'm almost positive he does. I am 95% sure he does. We need to have, find him. He would we, love us. Have we talked about, uh, I think, it, was it this season or last where he took his son to college? Uh, last season. I mean, imagine being his son at a college party. Yeah, so my dad's on The Bachelor. Oh, my God. He's like, dude, does he get the scraps? That's what like, some guy says. Like, They're not <laughs> God, scraps. They're... they're women that are trying to find love. Yeah, whatever. Whatever you want to call them. Does he same, get any? Same difference. Just answer the question, please. <laughs> One of those scraps is my mother. Well, you called her that, not me. All right, but... uh, Jeff, does The Bachelor, uh, Matt James, does he have any personality? No, and Matt, we're we're almost back to a pilot Pete situation here where I think the Bachelor or Bachelorette has one job. <clears throat> it's not to find love. To entertain us. It's to entertain us. But th to do that, you have to have a backbone. And this is why well, I love You didn't see the Colton season, I don't think, either. Was he worse than Pete? Colton was the one who was a NFL football player. And since we don't tape it, you can't see me using the Dr. Evil finger quotes. He was on the Chargers special teams for a while, mm, but he was a virgin. All? Jesus Christ. Wow. Those two things go hand in hand. So you're an NFL player and you're a virgin. That, I, I looked at my wife. I'm like, I, I think he's homosexual. What a waste. Which, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm like, dude, there's no way. What a waste of a 53-man roster. You would honestly have to like push women away from your dick. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is my take on, on Matt to, to both of you guys, and I think I'll agree with Banner. Um, so your job as the Bachelor and Bachelorette is you basically have to play referee. 
in the sense that when you see something run afoul, you have to call someone out on their bullshit and constantly agreeing with every – you can't agree with both sides of an argument. It just doesn't make sense. And Matt's the type of guy who two women can come to him and say, women A is lying. And then she'll say, woman B is lying. And Matt will say, I believe you both. And I'll say, that doesn't make fucking sense. And that's my problem with him. He will not pick a side ever. And I think that's the one side of the Bachelor Bachelorette. And not only that, that feeds into the drama, right? I mean, when you yeah. want to bang every chick there, though, you can't really pick a side. Yeah, I don't know if that's his motivation. I- I get, yeah. I get you though, because it drives me nuts whenever it's like, well, she's telling me one thing, you're telling me, I don't know who to believe. I'm like, well, that's where you're going to have to man up and decide who's crazy is. and his own truth. So right. speaking of having a backbone and quote unquote manning up, I know I shit on Queen Victoria pretty hard, but I fucking love her. She's calling everybody out and especially Sarah when Sarah was like, oh, look, I, I'm sorry, guys. You, you know what I'm talking about, Jeff? Well, yeah. I mean, Sarah called herself out, basically. But yeah. So the thing on her eye, I, I was asking my fiance, I was like, did someone beat the shit out of her? Yeah, what happened? The internet said it was a sty, which is like, yeah, Jesus. I mean, that's PR zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell him it was a sty, okay? <laughs> so which chick do you think she got in a fight with? She probably hit herself to then claim someone hit Whoa. her. Whoa. <laughs> victim shaming Jeff <laughs> Hornacek. Uh Victoria, I'm kind of with you, Banner. She's obviously not she's there for the entertainment factor. She's a plant. Correct. So yeah. as much as I wanted her out last week, she can stick around for like two more weeks. She's harmless. Yeah. At this point. And by harmless, I mean she's creating a lot of harm and damage to the show. You, but you have to have those ones that call out people on their shit. There's no way they'll win because they're almost the bachelor doesn't want a girl that's like tough-minded and speaks her mind because all of them are hot so they She's want the one that's like the quietest one there pretty much also guys one last thing that i have to mention uh before we move on it was official as of yesterday i saw the instagram post I from the too. previous season of the bachelorette dale and claire officially broke no. up yes. no i know i know we're all wanting to use them as the uh baseline to believe in love but <laughs> maybe it doesn't exist my wife is they walking can't out make the door. it She's packing us? right now there's no hope for us why is my wife's bag already filled with shit so do you think you dale just burnt? broke her in half and then decided hey you're 36 i'm 24 i can probably just do something else uh, rumor actually, is she wanted kids now and he didn't huh. who could have seen that coming yeah uh, uh, as e-news Instagram post reports, quote, after a whirlwind romance, the Bachelorettes Claire Crawley and Dale Moss are taking time apart. Well, they're Lincoln not broken bio, up, Jeff. They're just taking some time. Lincoln bio for why things have been, quote, <laughs> very tense, end quote, between the two, which is weird because Claire seems to just love de-escalating situations. Yeah. So none of this even sounds like the Claire I know. Maybe this is like a different, like a different version Maybe it's not I think they're the taking Claire some time. The I think they'll be it. right back. They were just like, hey, let's just, you know, what is it? Distance makes the heart grow fonder. So why yeah. don't I just go to Vegas, bang a bunch of sluts, and then I come back and we'll just figure this out. Let's just each take a lap, you know, <laughs> figure this thing out. Well, I'm going to stay here and just fucking tweet. You go east, okay. I'll go west, you know. Yeah. And then once we walk around the earth, we'll meet on the other yeah, side. Yeah, we'll meet the middle somewhere in Africa. <laughs> and communist China. It'll be great. <laughs> That sounds awful. <laughs> I don't. I don't have any other thoughts on the bachelor. I'm excited for next week. Yeah, I'm. I'm done. We need to be the official bachelor fucking pod if we're not already. Yeah, Sorry, Banner. Gonna... I interrupted you. And that brings us to our question and answer segment. Do you even lift, bro? Where we ask a question. And we leave you people with it. And the question today is courtesy of our good friend Wade on YouTube over at Wade's Movie World. Check out his YouTube channel. I'll uh, link it in the description. The guy does awesome work. He's a good friend of the pod. Here's his question. I've actually seen this uh, making its way around the internet, so I'm glad he, he brought it up. The question is, if you could remake one movie with one actor being retained and the rest being replaced with Muppets, 
what movie would you choose and who is the actor you'd keep? So you get to pick any movie that already exists and you get to keep one person from the movie in terms of an actor, but everyone else in the cast is filled with the Muppets. What would you go with? Brian, we'll toss it to you first. All right. So I went Star Wars A New Hope keeping Harrison Ford. God. I was I'm sure he'll be keeping, thrilled. Keeping Chewbacca, because then it'd be really weird. Like, well, he's kind of already a... Uh... Uh, Kermit is playing Luke. Of course. A- Animal is playing Chewie. <laughs> uh, Wait, Miss Chewie PK has to get replaced, even though he's not a human? Yeah, of course. Recasting everybody. Yeah. Um, Miss Piggy, obviously, is Leia. Gonzo is Vader. Sam the Eagle is Tarkin. Wow, that's a good one. Scooter is Obi-Wan, and uh, Dr. Bunsen and Beaker are C-3PO and R2-D2. Oh, of course. Great casting there. Me, 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 me. <laughs> I can already see them rolling through the sands of Tatooine yeah. to each other. That actually, you and I were talking about this off pod that actually has a chance of happening. Yeah, like, like, like a, it has a legitimate chance of happening. Like a Muppets Star Wars. Yeah. I'd be so into that. And you know, Cycli would come his pants. Oh my God. Cycli, Cycli would die of excitement. Yeah. All the blood would rush to his penis and he'd get lightheaded and pass out. Uh, that's awesome. Geiger, do you have one or do you want me to stall? Yeah, I have one. All right. What's yours? Uh, I want Pulp Fiction and I want to keep Samuel L. Jackson. So he just cusses him <laughs> up his whole fucking time. <laughs> I kind of went with the same idea when you hear mine. Uh, Miss Piggy is Uma Thurman. <laughs> doing heroin uh, in the bathroom yeah which would be she's gonna od which is fucking awesome i i'm trying to think who i want to be john travolta i think i want it to be kermit just because he's kind of first build so that makes fucking sense can we give him the wig to like look like yeah him? absolutely yeah he has to um, wear the wig animal is um well, i'm blanking on uh bruce willis oh, okay i was gonna say either ving rames or bruce willis who he has to be yeah vin rains i think would be fozzy bear so Fozzie gets raped in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's like, he was actually the first one I cast. Based on... I was like, who do I want to get raped? Oh, Fozzie. Put the gag He's... in their mouth. Got to be Fozzie, right? I'm trying to think of other... Uh... Other Muppets. I mean, Sam the Eagle's a, bi- a big one. Um... No, I'm just thinking of other characters from Pulp Fiction that I want. Uh, I mean, I've gotten most... Well, there's the guy who was originally cast as Michael J. Fox, who's like the drug dealer. Oh, yeah. I was like, get this chick out of my fucking house. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who I want for that. Maybe the baker guy or something. Be, I don't yeah, know. Sweet chef. <laughs> sweet chef. Right but can't you see Remember fucking Samuel me? Jackson reading the Leviticus 12 or whatever to fucking like a bunch of Muppets? They're just like Aren't looking just around like he's going to shoot us. Jesus Christ, that's fucking hilarious. Like, I, I just want to get high and watch that movie right now. <laughs> Dare dare I say we could probably even get Quentin Tarantino to come back and direct it. You gotta do the Kermit voice where he's like, does he look like a bitch? Does he look like a bitch? (laughs) (laughs) Like, Jesus. Disgusting. (laughs) Oh, man, that's fucking great. What's the scene uh, (laughs) with Bruce Willis' apartment and he's just, John Travolta's just taking a shit? Kermit (laughs) just comes out of the bathroom and his gun's over there. He's like, Ah, oh, fuck. And he just, like, shoots him <laughs> with a sawed-off shotgun. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck! <laughs> God, that's great <laughs> shit. Good job, man. Wait, this is a great question. So also, my... because, uh, sorry, but him and Miss Piggy would be dancing at um, Jackrabbit Slims. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, like, picturing Kermit doing that patented John Travolta dance is great, actually. <laughs> How do we get this made? We need to. I, I bet know. Tarantino would make it if we would ask him. Oh, 100%. And if we got a Kickstarter going, I think we could probably... What, how much money do you need to make this movie? $15 million? Let's just start a GoFundMe. This has to... I mean, this is where this is where all the money from 2020 when people need help, this is what they need. <laughs> Red Cross, <laughs> I know you pocket like 80% of that shit. Just throw it our way. And the great thing is, Matt, to your point, Samuel Jackson, we already know he'll do anything. What if you're in a hospital? It's like, listen, you could take this, and there's maybe a forty percent chance of living, or you can just watch this DVD of Pulp Fiction where everyone's Muppets except for Samuel L. Jackson. I know what I'd choose. 
He's like, yeah, where's the remote? Which remote does volume and which does the Blu-ray? <laughs> what I would ask. Oh, God. All right, mine, kind of similar to Matt's, would be The Departed. Mm. So, of course, just like he kept Samuel Jackson, you got to keep Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. In yeah. The Departed. And around him are <laughs> all the Muppets in this ensemble, vulgar, Bostonian set film. Kermit and Gonzo are Leo and Matt Damon's characters. Right, so Kermit, of course, is, is uh, Leo. And Gonzo is Matt Damon because he could play like the chicken shit guy, kind of like playing both yeah. sides. Uh, Faso is Anthony Anderson's character, the cop who's in <laughs> the academy with Kermit in the beginning. He's in like one scene. I know, but th- but Fozzie, that's like his best suited role in this whole cast. Um, <clears throat> Piggy is Vera Farmiga, so unfortunately she has to walk around with like the thong on. But she would be the therapist. And what does he haunt you at night? <laughs> You're like, I don't know. Sam the Eagle has to be Jack Nicholson. Like this is okay, what yeah. this is what yeah. we need. He's like, and my question is, when you're facing a loaded gun, what's the difference? <laughs> Here in America, bringing guns to a negotiation don't add inches to your dick. Um, Gonzo, I already said that one. Uh, Animal is Jack Nicholson's crazy ass right hand man that like yeah. that yeah. Irish Mr. Guy. French. That's right. Because him just doing the uh, uh, in the background all the time, like he's about to fight someone for no reason, I think fits perfectly with this aesthetic. And also, sorry, skip ahead 30 seconds if you haven't seen The Departed. But spoilers for the end. I mean, all these guys getting shot in the fucking head would just be insane to see. Like, <laughs> instead of blood, stuffing goes out yeah, everywhere. Like feathers come out of their fucking head. It would just be absolutely nuts. And when the one Muppet can play the guy uh, like falling off the roof and hitting the car and it like doesn't do anything to the car. I need this. I need Miss Piggy ODing. I need this Departed movie. Like we need this right now. Our country's in mourning. Seriously. This is what we're people help are us, begging for. Help us heal, Henson Company. Do your fucking part. Jesus. Quit being selfish. Because they can film all these at once. It's not like the Muppets... Can only be one place at one time, you know. Well, it was great about honestly. Me you could probably film the like both those movies in two months total. It was great about me and Jeff's is we picked Wahlberg and Samuel Jackson. Now, I mean, color me pink, but these are two actors that I think would actually do this. What's <laughs> happened? They've done worse. <laughs> it's kind of a thing in Hollywood. Like you really don't turn down working with the Muppets. It's like really frowned upon. Like, well, you said you wouldn't work with them. Who the fuck do you think you are? Mark Wahlberg telling a Muppet, maybe, maybe go not, maybe not, maybe fuck yourself. <laughs> Who's Alec Baldwin? Ah, damn, that's a tough one. Who is Alec Baldwin? Forgot he's in that too. He's like the. I know. <laughs> Hang on, we gotta solve. Um, it is could it Rizzo. Be... Yeah, I was gonna say either Rizzo or Rolf. It's probably Rizzo. Rizzo's Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Patriot Act. Patriot Act. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> we have to stop talking about this because it's just making me like cry at how badly I want it to happen. <laughs> if you said, Jeff, you can have one of these two movies happen or no Godzilla vs. Kong, I'd be like, make the f- let's fucking get the Muppet movie. Dude, the, give me the fucking Muppets. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. God damn it. I think I'd want Matt's more than mine almost. The do we I have to lock like down a... the country again for two months, but you get the two Muppets movies. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Small price to pay. Small price to pay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Wade. And uh, check out Wade's Movie World again for that great recommendation. Guys, before we leave the people for episode 140, any closing thoughts? Brian, will you first? Uh, pull over for emergency vehicles. Same thing, guys. I'm like Bob fucking Parker. I pulled over today when I and because I thought I saw a fire truck with their lights on. Turns out I'm an idiot. That's just the fire station by my house, and the truck was parked. Better safe than sorry, though. Yeah, well, I was pretty sorry, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Matt, how about you? What do you want to leave the people with for you one? Just always freeze your eggs. We need more people in the world. And uh, especially if you're a Muppet, freeze your eggs. Yeah, 100%. We have a, I think uh apple podcast showed us we have a lot of muppets that listen to this show so oh, yeah 
<clears throat> really good advice. So they'll love this episode then. Because apparently uh, Animal is an overrated drummer to Thurman. We lost everyone from England that listened to us, but we gained Muppets. So it's kind of a, it's been even and out. Basically a wash, right? Like how big is England? Not that big. We have 20 people. Something no. like All right. For the mad scientist, Brian Banner and our enforcer in the paint, Matt Geiger. I am the mayor, Jeff Hornacek, and we are the Bro4 Squad podcast. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Follow us on Twitter. At Bro4 Squad, check out our website, bro4squad.com. Honestly, we post all of our shit there, and we have our squad blog, which is updated like bi weekly ish, ish, ish. That has all of our awesome blog posts we wrote. <laughs> and if you type in Bro4 Squad as three separate words on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google, anywhere on the internet, you'll find all of our stuff. Until next time, we'll see you at the movies. When we were talking about The Bachelor, I started to remember the show Labor of Love. God, that was awesome. What about The Bachelor with Muppets and a real person? Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're honestly going replace any show with Muppets, but keep like one view. Just replace all my friends, family, and wife with Muppets in my real life. Massive.